Hi everyone, it's Debra at Lori's Country Cottage and I'm here to show you all about doing the blanket stitch on some of these little woolen projects that are very, very portable. So you might be thinking, well, I don't want to do anything for winter, but think about it. These could go out with you onto the deck and you could be doing some hand stitching. They are easily transportable as small pieces to take with you to the lake just to do some stitching by the fire. And of course we have kits that are also not just necessarily Christmas oriented, but lots and lots of seasonal kinds of ideas for you to put them together. You will see that many of the stitches that hold the pieces together, so this little applique fox held to the mitten structure, is blanket stitched on with a matching thread, but of course you could also do it in a contrasting thread as well. You'll notice also that blanket stitch has been used to attach the two pieces together. So the same stitch can be used as an applique stitch or as an edging stitch that actually structurally holds the piece together. In order to complete your embroidery stitches, you need one of a number of different kinds of thread that can be used. I'm going to be demonstrating these little spools of what are called cotton petites. What I like about these ones is they are already uh, as if you had taken two strands of a six strand cotton thread and so it's nicely uh, spun together and it's very very workable, doesn't tend to knot up and it's actually easy for a learner to work with, it, with this embroidery as well because the thread comes off the spool ready to go. You don't have to stop and divide the thread. But that's not to say you can't use six strand cotton. So just an ordinary six strand mercerized cotton can be done. You might wish to separate those six strands into groups of two or groups of three, depending on the intensity of the stitch that you want to be able to show up. And then of course you can always use a product like pearl cotton as well. They'll all function. You need then, if you're going to use all different kinds of threads, you need a good range of embroidery needle sizes. This particular package of Bowen needles comes from a size three up to, a, or sorry, down to a size nine. So three would be the biggest needles and you might need that size of eye to fit the pearl cotton. I'm going to use a size nine because in general with embroidery, the smaller the needle you can use, the better the quality of your stitches. So always choose the needle with the eye that's the smallest that you can function with. So I have also a nice little pair of snippers here. I live and breathe Karen K. Buckley <laughs> little snippers. They are wonderful because they are sharp to the tip. They are excellent for making very close to the fabric snips so you don't have a lot of thread and sticking out. Plus one blade is smooth and one blade has a slight serration to it. So you're never slipping back when you're cutting. So when you're cutting your pieces, it grabs onto it and pulls it into the blade rather than just letting it squeeze out and slide out. So they're an excellent little snipper to have for all your hand sewing. Uh, tasks that you have to do. All right, uh, you can see that I've just prepared a, f a p couple of pieces of wool. One is a piece of wool about the thickness that you would use for your little wool kits. And then this other one is a, a little thicker piece, but they are both going to work. So I'm just going to lay the red one on the white one for a bit of contrast. And of course, I have chosen my thread for whatever color I want to, to put around. In this case, I'm using the yellow for a good contrast so that you'll be able to see my stitches. I have cut the thread not too, too long. In general, if you cut your thread too long, you're, by the time you've passed your thread through your embroidery work a number of times, you will actually wear that thread out. So a good rule of thumb is to just hold your elbows at your sides and basically extend your hands like this. That's about the length of thread you should use for doing embroidery. So as I said, this product is already pre-divided for you. So I'm just going to quickly thread my needle and I'm going to put a knot on the end. I know that in my wool work, if I am, say for example, appliquing this little fox onto the back, I can start from the back and just hide my knot in the back. I will start in between the layers for when I'm going around the outside edge so that none of my knots are going to show. 
you can do the old traditional twist it around your finger knot. That takes a little bit of skill and a little bit of practice. A second way that you can put a knot on the end of your thread is quite easy if you picture the needle and the end of the thread making a circle. So bring the end of the thread in toward the needle and just lay it on the needle capturing it with one of your hands. Then take that thread and wind it around the needle three or four times. Keeping the tension on those twists, just transfer it between your thumb and forefinger and now push the needle up through, bringing all of those twisted or coiled threads to the bottom and you'll have the perfect tiny little knot. You'll notice on the blanket stitch that the blanket stitch itself extends down with a visible vertical stitch from the edge of the fabric and downward, but also there is some of the thread that's laying on top of the fabric as well. So if we look at the edge of this little piece, we see the thread has extended from stitch to stitch, stitch across the edge, but it also is coming down in a little ways. So we want to create as square a stitch as we can, as evenly spaced as we can, with all of the stitches about the same depth inside from the edge. Now of course you could make it more decorative and you can change the length of the stitch coming in from the edge, but of course that would be your artistic choice. For today I'm just going to demonstrate the same depth of stitch all along. Begin your stitch by coming up near the edge of the layer that you're attaching to. I don't want to come up inside that layer. I want to come up at the edge. And that's because the first stitch has to be made in a different way than all the rest of them. That's often the case with embroidery stitches. So I'm just coming up right on the very edge of that piece of fabric that I'm trying to stitch down. Now, I'm going to try to gauge all of my stitches and for the sake of the video, to try to make them a little bit bigger, I am going to go a half centimeter down in from the edge and come back right up where I came out with that thread in the first place. So I'm going about half a centimeter in and I'm coming straight up. But I am catching a little bit of the thickness of this white wool. And that's what's going to hold my red piece onto the white. Now when I go to make my subsequent stitches, they will all end up creating that little edge on the border plus the stitch here. So I'm going to guesstimate a half inch, sorry, a half centimeter away and a half centimeter in. Again, I'm going to stitch in and I'm going to come out on the edge. But now here's what's important with this thread. In order to create that little thread that lays on the edge, make sure this thread is laying underneath the needle as you stitch. So that's my second stitch. I'm going to go, my artistic design here is half a centimeter over and half a centimeter deep and I'm making my stitches along. So to repeat, this thread that's coming along here must be laying underneath the needle as you bring that needle out. You're aiming for stitches that are the same depth inside the edge and the same distance apart. But as I said before, if you wanted, you can create your own unique design by simply varying the depth of those stitches. So I'll make one long stitch and one short one. And you can see that there's some possibilities in creating some decorative effects by doing that. So I can choose to make them all the same or I can choose to vary them depending on what I want. If you're finding it difficult to find or to get the right amount of space as you're going along there to make them nice and even, try just laying a piece of low stick scotch tape or washi tape along here and that edge of that tape can be like a line that's easily liftable and can give you a guide until you get started. And of course the longer you do the stitch, um, the more there is for it to snag on. So keep your stitches probably at this, with this scale of fabric, keep them approximately half centimeter or less in size. When you've come to the end of your line that you're working on or you come to a corner, um, there's 
ways that you can cope with working around a corner. I'm just going to pretend I've come to the end of the line that I want to do so I can show you how to tie off and then I'll skip over and do the corner for you. So you can see this last stitch, we want to hold it into position so it doesn't flop down. So I'm now, if I was ending this line, I would bring my needle back down to the back so that I square up that stitch and make it put, go into position and then I'm ready to tie my knot on the back. With this thickness of wool, all I would really do is three small stitches in the same place. But if your wool wasn't quite so thick, I would take a stitch and I would wrap the, uh, sorry, take a partial stitch and leave the tip of the needle sticking out and wrap the thread around the needle a couple of times and just bring those twists down. And that just provides a little bit more of an anchor for your work. All right, I'll show you how to do a corner because you will need to be able to go around a corner with a continuous stitch. If I was approaching the corner now, I need to make sure that I keep that thread that's along the top edge in position. So I'm going to make my next to last stitch at the corner just as I normally would. Now I'm going to make a stitch that goes diagonally into the corner. So I'm pretty much putting the needle into that same place where I was coming in through the red, but I'm going to come out right at the corner and I'm just going to anchor that down or set it into position. And if you feel you want to anchor it down, go ahead. I don't think it needs it. I'm ready to do my next one here. Same position in the red and coming out around the corner and just gently nudging that thread into position. So now I'm ready to continue on with my stitches and I've made it around the corner in an orderly fashion. That is the blanket stitch.